Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Health on Tracks. And today we are talking about preventing antimicrobial resistance together. And our guest today is the very respectable Dr. Sham Hanin Atnan, also known as Dr. Sham. And she's a pharmacist with the Sungai Bulu Hospital. Good morning and welcome to the studio, doctor. How are you today? Thank you. Good morning. All right. Very oh, good. Good, huh? Okay, uh, A bit of mundane. <laughs> oh, uh, a bit of mundane Monday. Mondays. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, yeah, we were expecting public Just. holiday today. We wanted everyone to stay at home. But you know what? Since we already work, we got work to do. Well, of course, we are talking about antimicrobial resistance. Now, this is something that has garnered a lot of attention in the few years, like maybe in the past 10 years, because we have noticed that certain uh, antibiotics no longer react to the biotics. I guess, I don't know, to the bacteria, <laughs> okay. to the bacteria the way that they should. And uh, of course, the antimicrobial resistance is a very, very large uh, research and development field right now. And let's uh, start off with the main question. What are antibiotics? All right. Antibiotics to kill infection, mm -hmm. but only infection that caused by bacteria, mm -hmm. not by virus like COVID-19. Okay, of course. Not for fungal infection mm -hmm. not for whatever infection that is not causes by bacteria mm -hmm. because infection can cause by so many things mm -hmm. but antibiotics specifically only for bacterial infection mm -hmm. all right so that's what the it is all about yep so if you're having a headache please don't take antibiotics because it's definitely <laughs> not going to do anything for it doesn't go your headache away <laughs> yeah it does not yeah and if your doctors actually still want to prescribe you with antibiotics and uh, yeah it doesn't work that you well you can right? question them you can question them you have it right here Dr. Sham said you can question them but of course the very first antibiotic I ever found was if I'm not mistaken was <laughs> penicillin yes and that was also due to a I lab mistake know. yes a lab mistake <laughs> Where on, on the petri dish, right? Yeah. So let's talk about antibiotics and how does it work and what does antibiotics do to your body, doctor? All right. So it depends on whether it's oral, IV, or or whatever. Then it goes inside your body, mm -hmm. and then um, it will find the bacteria and kills it uh, mm -hmm. by introduced to these bacterial cells mm -hmm. and kills kills the cells mm -hmm. uh, by tr a number of mechanisms. They have a lot of pathways. Mm -hmm. Different antibiotics have different mechanisms. Mm -hmm. And different bacteria have different defense mechanisms as well. So you have to match between the two. Mm, yeah, it's almost like Legos, right? Building blocks. Yeah. Right. So, of course, and uh, one of the biggest concerns right now is as we have too many antibiotics on the market right now, and also the fact that everybody's using antibiotics for just about everything. Now, this very, very, very severe thing is coming out. Now, antibiotic resistance sounds simple, but the thing is, down the road, it will become much more severe than what it already is. What if there are no more antibiotics to treat bacteria? We will be back to the ages before penicillin, where even a single single simple operation can, might kill you right so what is antibiotic resistance what has caused this incident uh, antibiotic resistance is quite severe now mm -hmm. uh, i just came back from a uh, ic conference uh, just yesterday it's ended in klcc mm -hmm. so um we are running out of antibiotic <laughs> yeah early. so uh this one spoke but we call it uh we call it superbug. Mm -hmm. There's so many superbugs. Um, but the one in Malaysia that kills people is what we call as CRE. Mm -hmm. Kabapenem resistant antibacterial, which at the moment no cure. No cure. Mm. <laughs> Although it's a bacteria. Yeah, and uh, we have one last resort of antibiotic, but it's not working great. Mm -hmm. uh, and resistant have been reported mm -hmm. to that one and only antibiotic. So, Antibiotic resistance is caused by the defense mechanism that developed by the bacteria mm -hmm. becomes mutant mm -hmm. and it can defend themselves from the bacteria. Mm -hmm. antibiotics. So in other words, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's talk about this in layman terms, right? So essentially mm -hmm. what has happened is the bacteria has evolved yep. and it has evolved in such a way like that common cold, right? Like it has had many iteri uh, iterations, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, the way they evolve is, and uh, the way they evolve and they've evolved to make sure mm -hmm. that the antibacteria no longer work. Yep. Antibiotics no longer yep. work. Yep. Right. So that is crazy because, you know, mm. uh, and bacteria is also living mechanisms, right? Like they're considered to be living mechanisms. Yeah, very smart mm. people. It's very smart people. <laughs> very smart organisms. 
<laughs> yeah. yeah, living always very smart. Um, penicillin, for example, mm-hmm. after five years, I've been developed already to create resistance. Mm. The bacteria already create resistance to penicillin, and scientists are like, uh, it's a competition. Mm-hmm. We develop new antibiotics, we develop new antibiotics, and mm. keep on Pumping. challenging us with with. There have been so, lots of mechanism, mutant mechanism. Mm-hmm. So up to the extent that we are running out. And of course, uh, there's certain uh, bug, we call it bug, or this bacteria that mm-hmm. we still have antibiotic that we still can kill them. Mm-hmm. But the evolution of the bacteria is so great up to expand, they have become super bug. Mm. So we are keeping up, scientists are keeping up with them. They are, they are creating lots of new antibiotics. Mm-hmm on the pipe- pipeline but it gets resistant very fast mm-hmm. like they created that few years ago and few years after that yeah I mean like as you say five years for penicillin to become uh, you five know years. so that is very very scary Crazy. because there's only that many antibiotics that you can make right not many yeah. and, and it's quite a loss to the industry because they're creating something that cannot be used mm. so it's a waste of trillions of money in the research mm-hmm. and right now um, that's what we want to educate the public. Mm-hmm. It only use antibiotic when it is necessary. Oh, yes. And that is something that I have been doing since I studied biology all the way back in Form 4. Wow. Yeah, I don't take antibiotics at all, unless, of course, I really, really, really suck it. And wow. I know it's a, a stomach bug or something like that. There, because I, more people like you. Yeah, because back then, uh, we did study about antibiotic resistance, right? And uh, it scared me, like, because uh, we understood, because I, I love science. So we understood mm. that, hey, down the road, what if it doesn't work anymore, right? So how, yeah, and, and then we read about uh, before penicillin, like how just getting a it's splinter getting, uh, might kill you because of the... Uh, uh, simple, bacteria, yeah, yep. yeah, simple splinter, right? Mm. So you know what, doctor, we're gonna give you a short break. We're gonna get uh, a song playing right now, and this is a song that you requested for. This is uh, "Head Away." What is love, right? So, doctor, I hope this answers this for yeah, you. Yeah, we sang along. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we we sure can. We are talking about preventing antimicrobial resistance together with Doctor Shamhanin Atnan, a pharmacist with the Sungai Buloh Hospital, right here on your favorite station. This is what Tracks is of Fam. Head Away is what is love, requested by the good doctor, doctor. Shamhanin Atnan, preventing antimicrobial resistance together is what we are talking about. Now, this is a very, very important subject, and especially if you are parents, make sure that you don't feed your children antibacteria. Uh, anti, why am I keep on saying antibacteria? Antibiotics, the very first chance you get. Always look at the root cause and then work from there. Work with your doctor because right, th- you can call it antibacterial. Oh, antibacterial. Okay. okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So, doctor, yeah. let's move on with the questions. Right. What exactly is the right way to obtain antibiotics? Oh, this this is a very important question. So, um, the right way is always to get prescription, mm-hmm. and it should not be self-prescribed. Taken, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or online selling, or mm-hmm. go to pharmacy. Mm-hmm. There are some pharmacies that sell antibiotic without prescription, which mm. is unethical. Unethical, yeah. And it's wrong. It's, it's against the law. And people should be aware of that. Mm-hmm. So the right way is always to get a prescription from doctors. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, but even you get prescribed by antibiotic, as I say, you can always... Ask. Yes. <laughs> ask why. Always ask why, because we should live in a world where we are informed. Like, why am I being prescribed antibiotics when I walked in with a headache, right? You should as a patient. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, let's talk about antibiotic resistance right now. Why is it a problem right now and what is the impact on society? It's a problem because uh, we come to a point that we don't have anything else, anything to give to the patient. Um, If you are infected by the superbug but superbug only so far only in hospital setting mm-hmm. it's not at the community setting at the moment mm-hmm. alhamdulillah syukur but there's a possibility it can spread to the community as well it can be through the water contamination or through the to the to the food that we eat from the meat <clears throat> so if it gets there for example, you 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 don't need antibiotic, but you take it, mm-hmm. right? You already expose your. We have this what we call normal flora, mm-hmm. our bacteria that is already in our body, mm-hmm. but they are not they are not harm. They are, they are benign. Yes, they are benign, um, and 
that's the reason they are, they are special in our gut. Mm-hmm. Right? To the good bacteria. Yes, uh-huh. good bacteria. So if you expose them to antibiotics unnecessarily, they are the one who can get mutant. Uh-huh. And then they become malicious. Yep. All oh, right. Wow, that is scary. Yep. Okay, so the impact on society, of course, down the road, we 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 don't have enough antibacterial uh, antibiotics to be able to take care of even the most common mm. kind of bacteria because they have already mutated to such a point where they cannot be attacked with antibiotics, right? When our immune system are down, mm-hmm. when uh, we, we are vulnerable, that is where we will hit by this resistance. Mm. Especially if you become old and you have immunocompromised, you have comorbids, mm-hmm. you're admitted to the hospital. Uh, there is where the reception. It may not uh, happen now. Mm-hmm. Um, like all this misuse of antibiotic, you may well and you don't know it's lying there in your body. You just, they're like hidden enemy, you just hide there, mm-hmm. there, waiting time to attack you. <laughs> mm-hmm. Of course, I understand that. <laughs> Sleeper cells. Yeah. Uh-huh. And all... Um, in hospital, what we call it is uh, transmission from one patient to another patient. Mm-hmm. All right. So uh, you, you came in as maybe you have some diabetic issues. Mm-hmm. You came in for um, accident. You, you did something, but but you end up getting infected. Mm, a secondary infection in the uh, hospital, mm-hmm. and if you infected by this super bug, bug mm-hmm. then. There's high risk of mortality. You can die. Yeah, as, and uh, as you said, now right now in this current time frame, the immunocompromise, the older generation, those who have issues with their immune system, you know, mm. people who come in for something and then they get it mm. at the hospital. Now these mm. are the people most at risk. Yep. But down the road, there is a chance that this can happen at community and levels as well, community, right? Yes, uh, we start seeing that happening already mm-hmm. because of this. Uh, there's a widespread use in the community itself. Mm. <laughs> where people are prescribed with antibiotics unnecessarily. Yeah. So so it's your right to question your prescriber if you are prescribed with antibiotics. Um, unless it's really necessary, you really have infection, mm-hmm. then by all means, you have to take it. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, but one thing that always uh, people have misunderstanding is between viral infection uh-huh. and bacteria. Mm. Only bacteria infection require antibiotic. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of difficult to distinguish between the two, Your cold and uh, mm-hmm. uh, cold and cough and all that. Eighty percent, ninety percent is actually virus, which which you don't need antibiotics. Mm-hmm. Which you can't actually do anything about it. Yep. And uh, of course, um, now there's of course the you know the common statement that given out by doctors who give out antibiotics. They always say complete the treatment of antibiotics. Now, can we actually stop taking antibiotics after a day of taking them, or reduce the number of pills taken after feeling well, doctor? Is that advisable? Mm-hmm. Um, when this becomes viral, actually, I want to. Make things this girl. First, of course, uh, you have to complete the course. Mm-hmm. But there's also studies, uh, uh, clinical studies, to advocate shorter duration of antibiotics. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, for example, pneumonia now, uh, the studies advocate five days instead of seven days. And certain infection that normally doctor for hospital acquire especially, uh, up to 10 days, it can be shortened to seven days. That's a different issues altogether. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, so by right, clinicians should should follow the latest guidelines saying that shorter is better. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, if you're prescribed by antibiotic, doctor, the doctor already determined that it's a duration that you have to complete. Mm-hmm. You have to follow it because it doesn't uh, mean your fever subside or you don't feel pain because mm-hmm. infection is not pain. <laughs> yeah, infection is not be, pain. You, you cannot be measuring by fever. Mm-hmm. Fever is mm-hmm. not the real indicator of infection. Yeah. So, so uh, what happened if you stop abruptly? Is it doesn't kill the whole thing? So the survivor, the survivor, mm-hmm. the survivor of the the bacteria is the one that can fire back. Oh, right? this is this is like a Bollywood movie already. <laughs> you kill the entire village, one guy left alive, and he comes back kills your village. Wow, that is crazy. But yeah, and I mean that's analogy, right? The and the if you are gonna use antibiotics, you have to use it Com- completely. You have to wipe out every trace of that. Otherwise, that one bug which is still alive, one bacteria which is still yes. alive, yeah. 
He might come back. Yep. Yeah. Just waiting for that time. Mm, okay, we shall make a movie out of that. <laughs> All right. Why is it said that fever, cough, and flu does not necessarily require antibiotics? Uh, when are antibiotics actually needed? Okay. Um, I also have to uh, to admit that it's not easy to differentiate between uh, whether it's a virus or mm-hmm. bacterial. I'm not a doctor, I'm a pharmacist, mm-hmm. but um, the input I get from our ID physician in Sungabro Hospital and all my friends in the, from the doctors, um, basically, uh, by right, if you want to diagnose infection, you have to grow them in lab. You have to take the oh. cultures, just put them and all that, uh-huh. which is not easy to do. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so they will go for x-ray, mm-hmm. x-ray and the symptoms and they will get the history. Mm-hmm. So uh, if this virus, as I mentioned, uh, the study shows that 70 to 80% are virus mm-hmm. in COVID. Instead of bacteria. Uh, but of course, COVID-19 is different. Yeah, that, that, that's a whole different <laughs> case. Whole different. You have antiviral now, Paxlovid, you can, uh, the doctor will give you Paxlovid, but... The other virus, the respiratory virus, is self-limiting. Mm-hmm. Uh, it depends on immune system, but we have to be very careful if we are children, there are children, mm-hmm. um, you know, influenza. Mm-hmm. So we have drug for that as well, mm-hmm. flu. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, for for uh, some old people, they have this, um, they, uh, they have the, the tendency to develop pneumonia. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so that's requiring antibiotics. Mm-hmm. Uh, but other than that, you know, yeah. So the takeaway from that is let your doctor decide, not you. Yep. Absolutely. If you're not happy with the doctor, you can go to another doctor second. <laughs> get, get a second opinion always. <laughs> if you really, yeah. Oh, of course, you can find Dr. Sham. She's currently at the Sungai Buloh Hospital. I don't know how to re x ray. Understand, understand, understand. But you know what, doctor? Another short break coming our way. This is uh, from the band called Kiss. It is I Was Made for Loving. I think you'll like this one as well, right? Well, don't go anywhere. We are talking about antibiotic resistance and how can we fight it together. And uh, our guest today is Dr. Shamhan in Atnan right now. I was made for loving you by Kiss. And there's a song that we just heard right here on your favorite station. This is uh, Momentum and we are running health on tracks right now all the way to still 11.50, righty. And we're talking about preventing antimicrobial resistance together. And our guest today, Dr. Shamhan in Atnan in the studio. She's a pharmacist with the Sungai Buloh Hospital and absolutely wonderful person to speak to. Welcome back, Doctor. Let's talk about more things about antibiotics. Yep. All right. So, of course, antibiotics is also the social society's responsibility, especially patients, uh, to ensure and maintain the effectiveness on of antibiotics. So what is their responsibility? Okay. You have to really take care of yourself in terms of make sure you are fit and you have a good immune system. That's mm-hmm. the best way to fight infection. And some infection you have to understand is self-limiting. Your body can, can fight, fight against it. Mm-hmm. But if you are immunocompromised, you are elderly, these are the people, the vulnerable people that we mm-hmm. might pass infection to them. Mm-hmm. So please protect them, your children, your elderly, all these sweet comorbids. Mm-hmm. Uh, because you might um, you might not aware you have infection. Mm-hmm. Even virus can kill them as you as well mm-hmm. because they are very vulnerable population. So you have to understand that I think hand washing and all this during COVID-19 is good. Mm-hmm. Even very much when you are coughing and sneezing. And the other one that I would like to advocate just talking to um, about vaccination. Many people are not aware now currently if you, this is not bacterial, it's more virus like influenza virus. Um, there is vaccine available and uh, those uh, children, they are prone for influenza, so I really advocate influenza infection. Also for your elderly mothers and mm-hmm. mothers, mm-hmm. also pneumococcal vaccine for, you know, uh, some people at risk for pneumonia uh, infection caused by uh, this vir- uh, this bacteria. Mm-hmm. Strep pneumo actually is uh, pneumococcal vaccine is not for virus, it's for bacteria. Mm-hmm. Then, uh, in in Sungabul Hospital, those uh, with comorbid elderly, we do advocate vaccine to mm-hmm. them. So that's the prevention part. For the treatment part, uh, please do not demand antibiotic unnecessary to doctors mm. because some some people demand for it. Yeah, I mean, why? What do you get? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the question that you have to pop up in your mind, we have this uh, when we did our campaign. It's actually this month. This 
is currently is a antibiotic awareness mm. week mm-hmm. uh, WHO. So we have the slogan few years back, antibiotic peluka. So you have to ah. really, whenever doctor prescribes antibiotic, or you want antibiotic, you have to ask yourself, do you really need it? Mm-hmm. Is really necessary mm-hmm. for this I- question. Yep. I, I think the community needs to be made understand situations, like mm. give them the real examples of when do you need antibiotics. So I think because that one, uh, a lot of mm. people, because when we were younger, right, we grew up in the 90s, the 2000s, and a lot of clinics were popping up at that time. And of course, clinics, I'm not blaming the doctors. Yep. Clinics need to run, and of course, they need the funds to run. So and they demand because they ask for it. Mm, and they <laughs> ask for it. So they gave you antibiotics because you wanted it, mm. and also to make uh you know to make better on their you know profits right but you know that's all in the past right now as we understand this better mm. we need to know that antibiotic is a last resort mm. yeah you don't need it in the first go it's not like you go straight away you take okay antibiotic one for me please yeah, yeah you don't please don't do that because it is because terrible the side effect of antibiotic is different for right mm. the side effect is resistant Side effects resistance. The only thing that you get is antibiotic resistance, yes. right? So, doctor, do you mind if I ask you a question that's out of, of this? What What do you think is the future of antibiotics? In you know, after this, how would they go? Where would they go? Like as you say, there is the resistance issue coming up. Are there new technologies that you think are coming our way? Okay. Um. As I mentioned, I just came back from conference, and mm-hmm. um, I just want to share my PhD on. Optimizing doses of antibiotic. Mm, wow! Congratulations. Uh, we um, will measure the levels mm-hmm. and see whether the dosing is optimized. Mm-hmm. So it's very important uh, antibiotic to be used correctly. Mm-hmm. Dose duration, everything have to be correct, mm-hmm. and have to customize to the patient body weight, patient's renal function. Everything have to be customized. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is our role as pharmacists. Uh, so that's our role to make sure the dosing is correct. Uh, and of course, uh, the the industry have to really support in terms of. Now I can see there's a trend among the pharma company mm-hmm. to support what we call as antibiotic stewardship program. Antibiotic stewardship is what we call stewards in to ensure appropriate use of antibiotics. Mm. So now that's what this is one of the um, uh, strategy that we did, and Malaysia have this action plan for antibiotic resistance. This is one of it. So uh, pharma company now knows that if they don't uh, support antibiotic stewardship program, they will be losing and because they're creating something that's it's not sustainable. Mm. So now every day are uh, advocating stewardship to to preserve our antibiotic. Mm, understand like old buildings you need to preserve it mm-hmm. so everybody have to play their role yeah I think I think and some more antibiotic is all throughout our community all throughout our world so you know things like this do need to happen but I've also been reading on antibiotics of the future right I think they are planning yeah, on yeah, make, yeah many new 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 kids on the block mm, mm. and also they're making a move into uh, what's it called nanomaterials I believe strategy yeah nanomaterial strategy precision, with, precision dosing mm, precision dosing free metal ions just to kill Mm. outright rather than waiting mm. for blocks to fit together. Oh, that's very science. Yeah, very science. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> but of course, this is your territory and um, Doctor, I love talking to you today. Be absolutely amazing. Uh, you you made me understand a few other things as well. Uh, so finally, Doctor, before we end, what is your take-home message? Don't use antibiotic emphasis necessary. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Simple. Antibiotic peluka. Antibiotic peluka. Uh, yeah. Ask yourself, ask your doctor. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you so All much, right. Dr. Sham. And it has yeah. been an absolute pleasure talking to you today, especially on this Monday where everybody feels just lazy, yeah. right? <laughs> Preventing my antimicrobial resistance together. Our guest today, Dr. Sham Hande Natnan, pharmacist with Sungai Buloh Hospital. If you go there, you know who to look for. With that, <laughs> <laughs> with that, we're done for today. See you guys soon. Uh, I mean, you'll see me in about 10 minutes, lah, but see you guys on Health on Tracks next week as well. But yeah, right now, back to the music, Bad Naked Ladies with Pinch Me on Tracks.